Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and I'm so excited to be filming today's video. I'm gonna be going through my brand new Notion setup and showing you how I'm planning on tracking and achieving my goals in 2024. Previously, I would just set a very, very broad goal such as like, I wanna quit sugar. And I wouldn't have any way in particular to track that goal. So it would get to the end of the year and I would just look back and think, I've not really achieved anything where in hindsight, I probably had achieved a lot of things, but because I hadn't tracked it in a certain way and I just had this broad goal of and no idea <laughs> how I was gonna do it, I always felt like I hadn't achieved anything. And in the past, I have tried other templates on Notion or bullet journals or other ways, like just on my notes to try and plan and track my goals, but I just never felt like they worked for me. So I've decided to create my own template, which actually works <laughs> with the wonderful brain and go through that with you all today in this video. So the system that I decided to use for tracking my goals in 2024 is called OKR. OKR stands for Objectives and Key Results, and it's used by a lot of organizations and businesses and can be used in personal development. By using the OKR framework, I've broken my goals into objectives, key results, and action steps. So objectives can be seen as a broad statement that define what you actually want to achieve. After we've set all of our objectives, we then will look at key results. Key results are quantifiable measures which can indicate progress towards achieving an objective. So for example, if you're wishing to become a healthier and more active individual, a key result for you would be to complete a five kilometer race within 30 minutes by June of 2024. So when you're setting your key results, they should be following a very like smart framework to be specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. Because I feel like this is the time where you can actually measure each one of your goals. So for example, one of my goals in 2024 is to become a reader. That's the wider objective. But the key result that I would have under there is to read 12 books by the end of 2024. So that reading of 12 books is the measurable key result that I can do, which will then help me achieve that wider objective of becoming a reader. Because if I read 12 books in a year, I'm a reader. After we've set then all those key results, we then have action steps. Now action steps help you actually achieve the key results, which then help you achieve the wider goal, if that makes sense. It's all a very beautiful setup. <laughs> but the action steps are stuff like, say I want to get better at running or my goal for 2024 is to start running. So a key result could be to run a 10 kilometer race by November, 2024. So the action steps that would come underneath that specific key result would be to research a 10 kilometer race, find a training program, a 10 kilometer training program, go get a gait analysis for the right trainers, buy some new trainers, sign up to the race. There's a lot of things that then you can have in the actionable steps, which would all have deadlines. So overall, the idea of an action step is to essentially break down your goal into manageable steps. So like think of that key result. We want to break that down into little, little, tiny tiny pieces and then that way it makes everything way more attainable and actually measurable and you can see the progress. So I think when you have this clarity and this overview of how you're going to be creating your goals it kind of gives you a lot more motivation because you can actually see that you're making progress. There's nothing worse and more demotivating when you feel like you've not made any progress, you're literally stuck, like you're not moving anywhere where in reality it's all these little actionable steps that you probably ignore and you don't realize that you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis which help you reach your goals. So this this is like a really big backbone I think for my template is that I have all these actionable steps and key results which help me realize what I'm actually achieving. So that's my explanation of the OKRs. Now I want to show you a little bit more of the actual template itself. So welcome to my Notion template. This is the dashboard. This is kind of the home page to the goal tracker itself. So first of all, I have got the word of the year and my word of the year is consistency. <laughs> this is literally the thing that I live by, which is consistency matters. Slow and steady wins the race is something that I'm really trying to hone in to myself because I feel like with today's society, in the society that we live, we live in the society. Because I feel like in the nature of today, everyone wants everything, including myself, very quickly. We want it now. We're... And if we don't achieve something within a few days, we're like, oh my God, I'm a failure. Next, I wanna dive into the yearly objectives. Now, this is where we actually set the wider objectives. So obviously I spoke about objectives, key results and action steps. So the objectives, the wider image of our goal. We don't have to make it super specific or anything. This is just kind of the wider goal in which we want to work towards. It can be specific, it doesn't have to be. So I'm gonna fill in the rest of these. I've already filled it in on the separate template, but just for this video, I will go through and show you guys what I'm planning on doing. So. Okay. 
Okay, so for example, these are some of my yearly goals that I've got for the year. So once we've kind of written down our bulk yearly goals, the objectives, etc., whatever you want to do, what you can do is, for example, if you click into get monetized on YouTube, you can then open up that goal and click on the template, open up some questions and also a key results list that you can fill out. So with this, you can then go through each individual goal and actually written out what the goal is, why it's important to me and the steps in order to actually achieve it, just to kind of give my brain that understanding of what we're going to do here. So once you've done that, you can actually go in and create a key result. So for me, obviously getting monetized on YouTube, that would be to 4,000 watch hours videos on YouTube in three months. By this, I want to achieve this by the end of quarter one. So that would be the end of quarter one. And hopefully I will get 4,000 watch hours by the end of quarter one. That is the goal. So also the end of March to get 4,000. And I currently have 1,300. This goal would be zero, but I want to have 10. So what I really love about the objectives part is once you've filled them all out, what you can do is then go on back onto the main page and click on each individual goal slash objective and give them an image. And it gives you this opportunity to kind of visualize everything that you want to achieve for the year. And I absolutely love a vision board. So for me, it was really important to kind of incorporate that into this template. So what I have to do is kind of go onto Pinterest and just find pictures that resonate with those specific goals. You can save like a bunch of different ones. Like if you wanted to print them out or put like another vision board together. So once you've given an image to all of your objectives, what you can then do is go back to your key results. Uh, there is actually a specific key results page that you've got on the databases. Within each of these key results, there could be an action step that you could then add to be completed in the next four quarters, in the next quarter, whatever it is. These are the ones that I feel like you will go back to the most and add to all the time. Another thing that you can do in the key results as well is add a habit. And not every single key result is going to require a habit or need a habit to be completed. And I think it's also important to remember when creating habits for these key results to not go too crazy. When I put 2024 into a quarter, to section that basically means that I want to continue that specific key result for the whole year it's not just to be concentrated on a specific quarter so for me to read 12 books I'm not expecting to do that within quarter one I'm expecting to do that within the full year so for that for me that habit right now is expected to kind of last for the full year that might change because when it comes to kind of developing a habit, obviously that does take some time. So maybe there might become a point in the future, the near future where I feel like, okay, no, I don't need to have a tick box to be able to read two pages a day because now I'm reading consistently without having to have that habit in place. So then I could remove that habit and then replace that habit with something else. I think if you have more than four goals and you're shooting too high, you're spreading yourself too thin and you're not able to kind of concentrate on those four goals, more likely they're going to slip up and not achieve any of them at all. So not every single key result is going to have an action step, but what a great thing to do is once you have got all your key results down, you can actually go through and decide what those initial action steps will be. So once we've put in all of our deadlines, so I want to give everything a place in my home. I need to buy some Ikea drawers. So for example, once you've went through and you filled out all of the action steps, it might look fuller than this, it might look less than this. It honestly depends on the key results slash goals that you have for yourself. It doesn't have to be super full now. I think as long as you have like one or two for every other goal of things that you can actually work on and get yourself started that's the thing that matters like some of these i'll add to some of these i'll take away from some of my key results don't really need action steps where some of them might need more and it honestly depends on the goals that you have so once you kind of put in all your dates and i've put some of these as dates in december just to show you for a second if we go on to our dashboard this is actually what will show up on a monthly basis which i think will really help me to stay aligned with what I have to have done because if it stays in the all action steps page I'm not going to be going in there on a daily basis and checking so I actually do have this set up to my main main page of my whole notion as well so that I have an overview 
and also a monthly key results. So this goal tracking overview kind of shows you the next month, what is happening, what are you working towards this month? And you can also look then at like the key one, key two, key three, key, <laughs> key three and key four. Don't really have much going on for them. I haven't gotten that far yet, but for key one and key two, they're pretty loaded months, especially key one. Key one is gonna be a heavy part of the year, but I feel that's always to be expected because they are the next upcoming months. I honestly can't look that far ahead and I don't want to look that far ahead because I have no idea. Life is so unpredictable. You have no idea what is going to happen, what is gonna change. So it's no point stressing about what's gonna happen then. Yes, sure, it's great having some sort of direction and idea, which obviously comes into play when you're setting these objectives. These are, these are the wider images and visions that I have for myself but it doesn't necessarily mean that I have to break them all down now and have it all figured out because it changes. And I feel like when you try and have everything figured out and sorted for the next year, it just causes so much unnecessary stress and chance for things to not go to plan and for you to feel disappointed. So for me, it's best to kind of have that opportunity to have those check-ins on a quarterly basis, on a monthly basis, which I actually do have. <laughs> I've got monthly check-ins where you can go through and have these intentions for the month. You can go through and have the reflections and see what's working, see what's not working for the month and how you can then evolve going forward for the rest of the year. I think that is the best way to do it. So don't stress about having everything figured out because you don't need to. I don't, nobody does. And if they tell you they do, they're probably lying. So another thing that I have in this template is something that's very useful for me and I'm sure it will be for others as well, is that I have a someday maybe list because I always have so many ideas that come into my mind of like, I wanna try this, I wanna do that. And sometimes you just need to take the back seat on a lot of the goals and dreams that you have and put it into a someday maybe list. So for me, this is a page where I can go in and put in things that I would like to do, but right now, it is not a priority. It's a place I can come back, reflect on regularly and see if I can then move any of those into my current goals. We also do have obviously the habits overview. So when you add your habits on your key results page, they will actually come through onto your habits page, which means you can go through and have a check of what you want to track. And you can say, I'm not tracking it. I'm tracking it, etc. And when you are tracking it, what it will be, it'll be on your habit tracker overview. So for example, for me, it's like meditating, read two pages a day, say make my bed, an exercise. And depending on if you tick them off, your progress will go up for the day. Easy peasy, lemon squeezing. And you can have a little month overview as well, if you wish. Each of the quarters are broken up. So you can also go into each quarter and have a look and you've got all the key results which are broken down, which I think is a really helpful way to see everything as well by quarter by quarter. We also have quarterly check-ins where you can go in and see what's been working well, what's not been working well. And you also have monthly overviews as well. So at the start of them every month, you'll set a monthly intention. For example, my monthly intention for January is to get my sparkle back. Ooh. Sparkle back. That's my main intention for January at the minute. So essentially that is the whole setup of how I'm going to be achieving my goals. And there's so many possibilities with Notion. I think as much as I do love writing down my goals and having pen to paper, I feel like they get lost so easily. At least for me, like with my ADHD brain, pieces of paper do not go well with me because they will get lost. They will get crumpled up somewhere, shoved into some kind of folder, creating clutter. Like just not for me. For me, Notion is a great place because I have it on my phone, I have it on my desktop. I use Notion in so many other aspects of my life. So for me, it just makes sense to have a goal tracker on here as well. And if you are interested in this particular tracker, then you can find the link below if you wish to download it. So to wrap up the video, I wish you all an extremely successful 2024 and I hope that you are able to achieve all of your goals and more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Ciao!